Nepal, South Asia, is home to the planet's highest mountains and the sprawling plains of Chitwan National Park. It's a haven for wildlife. including one of the world's most endangered animals, the Indian rhinoceros. In 1966, just a hundred lived here. Today, thanks to conservation efforts, their future looks much brighter. Chitwan is a sanctuary for rhinoceros. And the park's research provides valuable insight into the secret world of these mighty and mysterious giants. mountains tower over Nepal in South Asia. And beneath their snow-covered peaks are the plains of Chitwan National Park. The park stretches for over 900 square kilometers. It's a vast expanse of unspoiled natural habitats, teeming with wildlife. like the marsh crocodile, a streamlined and stealthy predator. And one of Asia's rarest crocodiles, the gharial. Its saw-like snout sets it apart from other crocodiles. It's the perfect design for catching fish. Waterfowl also thrive in the Chitwan wetlands. Lesser adjutant storks scour marshes for fish and frogs. And Indian peafowl roost in the trees. This is home to many endangered animals including one of the rarest in the world. The greater one-horned Indian rhinoceros. There are only 2,600 in the whole of Nepal and India and at least 500 of them live here. Chitwan is one of the last refuges for these mighty and mysterious giants. It's mid-May and summer is just around the corner. 
At the Chitwan Wildlife Conservation Institute, researchers closely study the rhinos in the park. Researcher Bishnu Lama prepares to go to work. The presence of bears, tigers and rhinos make travelling around the park on foot too dangerous. The best way to get around is by elephant. Some of the park's rhinos have been fitted with transmitters and Bishnu tries to pick up a signal. He has a clear view over the tall grasses. And he can see they're being watched by an inquisitive sloth bear. The mahout steers the elephant by gently touching the back of its ears. It would be almost impossible to walk through the grasses and wetlands. On the back of an elephant, it's an easy ride. Suddenly, Vishnu picks up a signal. A rhino is nearby. As they get deeper among the grasses, the signal gets stronger. Fifty meters ahead, are some unmistakable shapes. Two rhinos are hidden among the grasses. They move slowly closer, trying not to scare them. Researchers have named many of the park's rhinos. And this is a familiar face, a female called poker, which means bump in Nepalese. It's a name gained thanks to the large lump on her rear. Poker is thought to be around 30 years old. Her horn is around 30 centimetres long. And a thick skin covers her body like armour plating. Rhino skin is so strong, it was even used by humans to actually make armour and shields. She has three hooves on each foot and can reach speeds of up to 50 kilometers an hour. Poker has raised three calves. This is her fourth, a two-year-old female. She's almost as big as a mother, but her small horn is a sign she's still young. Rhino are solitary animals, but the bond between mother and calf is a special one. Females are pregnant for around 16 months and give birth to one calf at a time. They'll stay together until the next baby is born.
Hocus calf sounds distressed. She's become separated from Poka while foraging in the long grass. Rhino have poor eyesight, but their hearing is extremely sensitive. Poka rushes to the rescue. There's no damage done, and they carry on eating. Rhino can eat up to 100 kilograms of grass a day. Their prehensile top lip works like fingers. It's adapted to grasp large clumps of food. It's the ideal tool for helping feast on the park's long grasses, known as elephant grass. Leaving Poka and her calf quietly grazing, Bishnu now hopes to find some of the park's other rhinos. Chitwan National Park spans over 900 square kilometers. And researchers have identified one large marsh in particular where many rhino gather from May to June. Vishnu continues his search. His transmitter picks up another signal. There's another rhino close to where Poker and her calf were grazing. and it's a huge male. This is Zaka, which means short-tempered in Nepalese. His left ear has been badly torn in a fight. He weighs around 2.2 tons and is armed with a huge horn. Indian rhino don't rely on their horn during fights. They prefer to use the two teeth in their lower jaw. Zaka urinates while he walks. By doing so, he's marking his territory. Poker and Zaka's movements around Chitwan are of special interest to the researchers. This is a map of the park. The blue indicates Zaka's territory. The red is Poker's grazing ground. Most of it is in Zaka's territory. And that can cause tension with other males. The sound of two male rhinos fighting echoes from the forest. One of them races into a clearing. He's lost the fight, 
but managed to escape. Vishnu watches the victor stride into view. It's Zaka. The intruder made the mistake of trespassing into Zaka's territory. He now has deep wounds as a reminder. The rhino has lost an important weapon too, one of his front teeth. His ear is torn and his body is heavily scarred. Male rhino usually fight over females. This one has clearly come out second best. Vishnu continues his search. In 1973, Chitwan became Nepal's first national park and a protected area. Today it is crowded with more than 500 types of bird, over 70 species of mammal, and countless other creatures. Wildlife can roam and breed under the park's protection. In 1984, Chitwan National Park became a World Natural Heritage Site. And at the Conservation Centre, animal welfare is a priority. They work with the government to combat poaching. and wounded rhino from across the country come here for medical care. Vishnu checks a recent arrival, a young calf terribly injured by a tiger. Many calves arrive after losing their mothers to poachers, but this calf has an even tougher fight ahead. June arrives. It rarely rains now, and daytime temperatures can reach over 40 degrees Celsius. The heat can be overwhelming, and elephants need to regularly cool down. So do people. Vishnu has returned to see Poka and her calf. It seems the heat is too much for them too. They seek refuge in a pool, one of around 30 small marshes in Poka's grazing ground. Mother and daughter wallow for a while. Soon it's time to get back to grazing. They must keep eating, however hot it gets.
but once out of water, they're plagued by flies. Rhino have few natural predators due to their size and strength, but small insects are their worst enemies. They suck their blood and lay eggs on their skin. Poker and Calf head for the shade of the forest. Vishnu stays close. Mother and daughter seek solace in another small pool. Poker submerges as much of her body as she can to try and get rid of the flies. Her ears stay pricked for danger. She seems satisfied that all is well. Close to her mother's side, the calf feels safe. She seems to enjoy licking Poker's body. Scientists think calves do this to lick salt from their mother's skin and also as a sign of affection. The water offers some respite from the baking heat and the armies of insects. Before leaving the marsh, Poker covers her body in a layer of mud. This acts as an insect repellent. They slowly make their way back into the forest. Now it's time to find somewhere to rest. For such a huge animal, walking the grasslands in the searing heat takes a lot of energy. Frequent naps are a must. Dark clouds roll in. Wind whips the grass. The rains are coming. Vishnu follows as Poker and her calf set off again. Over the coming weeks, the rain will steadily increase. From June to September, it rains most days, flooding the marshlands and leaving lush vegetation behind. The rain doesn't deter Poker or her calf. They've made their way towards a large area of wetland.
and Bishnu isn't far behind. They finally reached the largest marsh in the park. And it's an oasis for birds. Poker and calf wade straight into the water. After the small pools they visited, this marsh is a luxury. It's at least 150 meters long, wider and deeper. During the rainy season, river water pours into the marsh, keeping the water temperature relatively low. It's an ideal place to cool off during the summer. And unsurprisingly, it draws a crowd. Another rhino arrives. It wades straight in. The rhino don't have to leave the water to feed either. Having raised three calves, Poker knows the marsh is a good place to find food. Water chestnut is a particular favourite. With its deep, cool water and wealth of feeding opportunities, it's obvious why so many rhino visit the marsh. More arrive all the time. Luckily, there is enough space and plenty to eat for young and old alike. Another mother and calf arrive. This calf is only about two months old and its horn hasn't grown yet. Its mother doesn't let it out of her sight. All of the baby's teeth haven't grown yet either. Soft aquatic plants make ideal baby food. The large marsh offers another advantage for mothers with young in tow. Semi-submerged and with food on tap, there's no need for calves to roam around. There's far less danger of them becoming separated from their mothers. It's an ideal rhinoceros nursery. And rhino 
aren't the only visitors. Samba deer cool off in the shallows and feast on the plants. And Bishnu spots one of Chitwan's most iconic animals. A Bengal tiger prowls nearby, hoping to benefit from the abundance of prey drawn to the marsh. Birds hitch a ride on the rhino's backs. They're welcome passengers as they feed on the flies and parasites that plague the rhinos. They even clean between the creases. But they have to be careful not to outstay their welcome. While wallowing, Poker stays vigilant. And something is unnerving her. Some of the rhinos are getting too close for comfort. So Poker lets them know. but they don't seem to be listening. Slowly, they move closer. Poker warns them again. but they don't move an inch. It's a standoff. Poker backs off. Despite their fallout, the rhinos stay in close proximity. The minor misunderstanding soon seems forgotten. Food is their number one priority. Another rhino closes in, but Poker doesn't seem concerned by this new arrival. even when it nuzzles her calf. The visitor is one of Poker's older calves. It seems happy to be reunited with its family. But its welcome is short-lived Poker gently pushes it away. Sensing its mother's rejection, the rhino returns to its solitary life. Maybe looking for somewhere quieter to wallow, Poker and Calf move on.
they arrive at what seems to be an empty stretch of water. But they're not alone here either. This is Zarka's territory. And he spies a chance to mate. Snorting loudly expresses his interest in poker. Zarka moves closer, but his attention is unwelcome. Poker makes her disinterest clear. And Zarka gets the message. Female Indian rhino don't come into season again until their calves are over a year old. It will be some time before Poker is ready to reproduce again. October arrives. The snowy Himalayas contrast sharply with the grasslands of Chitwan National Park. It's the dry season. During November and December, less than 10 millimeters of rain falls each month. The scenery changes dramatically. Once lush green grass has turned brown. Flocks of migratory birds signal winter is approaching. Each year, around 50,000 birds visit Chitwan. The waters teem with ruddy shell ducks. And ospreys come here to fish. Vishnu is back, hoping to find Poker and her calf once again. but the large marshland has shrunk to less than half its size. And there's no sign of rhino anywhere. All Bishnu can see are birds. And withered water plants. The once flourishing marshland has all but dried up. Vishnu widens his search for poker. But his radio transmitter stays frustratingly quiet. He wonders if maybe they've sought refuge in the forest. Leaving the grasslands behind, they wind their way through the trees.
even among the shade of the trees, the effects of the dry season are clear. A small pool Poker visited in the summer has all but vanished. But signs of recent visitors have been left behind in the mud. Huge footprints show rhino have been here. And they're not the only ones. A hidden camera reveals the shrinking pool is still an important water source. First to arrive are two thirsty macaques. An owl swoops in next for a quick forage. A sloth bear drops by too. Last of all, a lone rhino comes to quench its thirst. The muddy dregs are a vital source of drinking water. It takes deep gulps. Until something scares it. But there's still no sign of poker. Back at the conservation centre, one patient has made a remarkable recovery. The baby rhino rescued after the tiger attack. After four months' care, it's thriving, thanks to the hard work and dedication of the Wildlife Sanctuary staff. Meanwhile, back in the park, Vishnu continues his search for poker. At last, he picks up a signal. He can just make out poker and calf in the distance. The two rhino have found some water in a small marsh hidden among the grasses. It's just deep enough for a bath. But Poker's calf spots another young rhino who wants to join them. Poker warns it away. During the dry season, water is highly prized and Poker's unwilling to share. The young rhino was easily frightened. 
Its mother is a different story. But Poker stands her ground again. She chases the calf away. And its mother follows suit. One last look to check they've gone. As the day heats up, Poker and Calf head for the cool of the forest. During the autumn, rhino have to cover a much greater area to graze than during the summer months. Food is scarcer. Luckily, poker has found something special. Rhino apples. The apples are only about three centimeters big, but are a rhino favorite, hence their name. Rhino helps scatter apple seeds. When they go back out into the open, they spread the seeds in their dung. But the apples will be gone in a few weeks. They must savour them while they can. Soon, Poker's calf will have to survive without her mother's guidance. But until that day, they have a remarkable and unbreakable bond. Here against the stunning backdrop of the Himalayas and surrounded by the protected wetlands and forests of Chitwa National Park, the future of the Indian rhinoceros is hopefully secure for many years to come.